So today we are going to cover probably two services. One is RDS relational databases services plus DynamoDB. Let's see how much we can cover. If we can target both of them, that will be good. Otherwise, we'll stick to one RDS only. In RDS, what our plan is, what is RDS? How to create RDS? How to create SQL Server in RDS? How to create MySQL in RDS? How to create Postgres in RDS? And connect with SQL Server Management Studio. Here, connect with MySQL Workbench. In case you don't know about this, this office, I will tell you from where to download. And here I will create Postgres in RDS and connect with uh, D Weaver. And then I will tell you how to create SQL Server Backup to S3. Then we'll see what is Read Replica. How to convert, how to create Read Replica in Postgres or any SQL Server. And how to promote Read Replica to primary instance. And what is database proxy? How to create it? And how to create it? This is the plan. See how much we can cover out of this because this is a long waiting lab. Uh, every step is going to take a lot of time. So let's start with very basic thing. What is RDS? What is RDS? As the name suggests, RDS is Relational Database Service. Under Relational Database Service, what you can do is, it's a traditional model of storing data. Traditional way of storing your data in rows and column format right so generally we create a table right generally we create a table in a rows and columns format we call it relational database relational database that all the tables have a relation with other tables that's why we call it relational databases like primary key, foreign keys. That relation is there, right? So that type of things. So for example, let me just design one table in case you don't know what is table. Let me uh, show you one quick table. Mm, just say user management table. Or let me just show you some tables over the internet. It will save our time. SQL server table sample or any any kind of you can say Oracle, you can say SQL server. I will tell you what different version of RDS we have available. Just to show you one demo, this is SQL. This is one of the table. This is one of the table. This is one of the table. Right. So basic table it is going to show you. 
this is the table this is a table if i can show this one for example this is a table where we are storing the data inside the table similar work i am going to do now with rds but when i am going to work with rds rds gives you multiple variety right in market there are multiple rds versions of rds versions are available most popular is oracle right we have microsoft sql we have postgres we have mysql right multiple databases are available and these databases we are going to work in aws first of all i will work with mysql first of all i will work with mysql that how you can create sql server in rds and connect with it using server sql server management studio in case you don't know about sql server management studio this is a tool you can download this tool at free of cost so you just need to go to google and type it sql server management studio download so you can go to microsoft documentation it's a free download you can just click on it and it will be asked to you to download this software free download so moment you click on this link this software will be downloaded and it will show like this sql server management studio so i have installed this software in earlier days so you can install the software on your machine now i am going to create one instance for you and i will show you how to create sql server how to create mysql how to create postgres three three servers i am going to create and then i will connect with one by one so first of all i am going to aws console sign in to the console and here you need to search for rds rds relational databases service or you can click on recently visited also let me click on recently visited click on databases or you can just go to dashboard back it's okay to home have on the dashboard so this is a dashboard guys as of now no instances is available as of now no instances is available here you can create your databases so moment i click on create database it will ask you which kind of database you want to create like i told you in in aws rds we have multiple options available multiple options available aurora is one this is mysql compatible then aurora postgres compatible is different then we have mysql mariadb postgres oracle microsoft sql server i am not going to teach you that how these sql works the purpose is here to how to create it and connect it i will 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 be running few basic command like creating a table inserting data fetching data that i will show you but rest of the things you have to do by your own so this is related to database administrator jobs most of the time you will be creating database administrator will handle this part but you should be knowing how to create it how to handle that right so when first thing first when you are going to create a database it gives you two options one is 
standard create one is easy create so first question comes in mind which one i should use standard one or easy create let me tell you one thing here if you are choosing easy create then most of the configuration will be chosen by aws by default only it is asking you few things database name admin that's it you can create your database very easy but we are not going to use easy create easy create is useful when you are coming from non it kind of background it is easy only asking for two details that's it but i am assuming you guys all are having good technical knowledge and i will like to elaborate more on this standard create so moment you choose standard create it is going to give you seven options same seven options for available in easy create also so i am saying here first i want to create microsoft sql server when i select this microsoft sql server see this guys what it is saying aurora my sql compatible addition is amazon enterprise class my sql compatible database it has support for all these why i am selecting here microsoft sql server and they are giving a benefits to my sql compatible addition the reason is simple they are not promoting microsoft product here they are focusing more on the aurora aurora is their in house product they are focusing more to sell aurora for my sql aurora for postgres because my sql syntax and postgres syntax are completely different so that's why they have made two versions two engines aurora for my sql aurora for postgres even though i'm selecting here microsoft sql server it is giving me a benefit of my sql compatible addition so you can ignore that let's go with microsoft sql server in microsoft sql server it, it is giving you two option here one is amazon rds one is amazon rds custom in case of custom it gives you extra privilege to the os use this option if you want to customize the database operating system and infrastructure this is kind of customization you need in your operating system you want to install some patches you want to install some extra utilities that is not i am going to work i am just going to explain you amazon rds amazon rds means aws is owning everything including automatic patching and choose this option if you don't need to customize your requirement or environment so most of the time amazon rds would be good for you so scroll down in addition in additions microsoft sql server gives you four options sql server express edition sql server web app edition sql server standard edition sql server enterprise edition in case you don't know about this i would advise you go and study about microsoft documentation you will find the differences just let me tell you one difference that it is a basic support it is a basic edition 10 gb and we cannot afford a cost of sql server enterprise edition this is too much costly this works on enterprise level only in multiple thousand dollars it would come this is web edition in according with microsoft licensing policy it can be used to support public and internet accessible web pages website and all these things so i am only going to work sql server express edition and that too comes with a cost and cost i will show you how, how much cost it is going to add in my account scroll down once you scroll down 
it gives SQL Server versions. In SQL Server, we have multiple versions. 2014, 2016, 17, 19, then different, different patches also. So I am going to lit take latest one, SQL Server 2019, engine as a 15. Engine as a 15. Then settings. In settings, it is asking you name. What name you want to keep it here? For example, I, I can give any name. I am giving Joytress hyphen uh, <coughs> MS SQL. Joytress hyphen MS SQL. Master username. In master username, I am keeping admin by default. You can change it to any name. Admin. Auto generate a password. What password you want to keep it here? For example, I am writing a password default admin 12345. Admin 12345. This is a password, confirm password. Now, instance configuration. It is asking you how much CPU and GB, uh, memory GB you need for this instance. I am saying I am looking for 2 GB. In case you say 4 GB, the cost is going to change. And let me scroll down to uh, give you uh, cost flavor. See, uh, it is going to cost me $69 per month if I am going to work with um, 4 GB. If I am going to work with 2 GB, it is going to cost me around $44 per month. $2 for storage and $42 for USD and including license cost. AWS is not going to charge you separate license cost. Generally what happens is when you are going to buy Microsoft SQL products, you are going to buy licensing from Microsoft. Here AWS has a good contract with Microsoft. They will pay internally to Microsoft also when you are going to create this database. So here I am saying I want to work with 2 GB of RAM. Then storage option. How much storage you are looking for on your database? Here it is giving me the minimum value is 20 GB and the maximum value is 17,000 around right GB. And this is a limitation, guys. This is a limitation. In most of the RDS, when you move to cloud, they have somehow restrictions. They have somehow they have the restrictions. And that's why AWS is promoting their products. Because their products, they don't have much limitations. But when you are going to work with RDS with Microsoft SQL Server or MySQL, or Oracle, they have these kind of limitations. You cannot freely say that I need 50 TB of instance in SQL Server. This is not going to happen. There's a limit of 17 TB around. 17 TB. So here I'm saying allocating storage is 20 GB. Just to test this, I'm taking 20 GB. Scroll down. Next option is storage auto scaling. Storage auto scaling means let's say 20 GB is going to over. What happened in that case? So if you have this option enable, enable storage auto scaling, you can, AWS can increase it. AWS can increase this. For example, I'm saying the maximum threshold would be 100. But how AWS is going to calculate that? For example, this is a 20 GB of storage you are giving. And AWS, is, AWS has observed you are approaching near 18, near 18, which is 90% of 20, right? 90% of 20 GB. You are going to use 18 GB of storage then AWS will automatically add 10 more percent to GB. Then again, you are approaching 22, AWS will add two more. 
to more like this it will keep on adding but the maximum threshold value will be 100 next is connectivity connectivity in connectivity we have two options one is whether you want to connect this ec2 instance whether you want to connect this ec2 instance from uh, sorry whether you want to connect this database instance from ec2 if yes you need to click on this option and you need to tell which ec2 you are going to attach it but i will not going to tell you this option i will take this option separately for a moment i am choosing don't connect to in ec2 instance and network type i am working with ipv4 only no dual stack mode virtual private cloud i want to work with default vpc db subnet group there is no need to change i will tell you what is the use of db subnet group for a moment you need to keep it just default that's fine public access it is important public access when you are going to work with organizations or enterprises you will keep this option as a no you will keep this option as a no but i am going to make it yes because as of now i don't have vpc uh, subnets all this here and i want to connect this instance in a public manner yesterday we have seen how to create vpc and all right so that after creation of vpc private subnet public subnet you will be keeping this database in private subnet but for a moment i am keeping it in yes and this is publicly open scroll down existing uh, existing vpc security group you want to add your new security group or you want to use existing group so i'm not going to use existing one because this might create a problem for you i am clicking on new one and giving a name here geo address ms sql and uh, i'm last in last i'm giving sg security group availability zone do you have any preference where you want to create i have a preference in ap south 1b that's it rest of the settings you can ignore as of now rds proxies is not needed certification need there is no need additional information additional configuration by default your sql server one work on 1433 port so i'm going to choose same here 1433 in case you want to change it you can change it that that's fine but advice is don't change the default configuration of any software microsoft sql authentication i don't want performance insight performance insight means uh, you want to add performance insight which query is running slow which joins are not working properly which methods are creating blocking so that kind of details you can get in performance insight as of now i am making it off i don't need that that's it guys we are done create database so before cre uh, creating a database i want to take a pause here and please share your question if you have any any questions so far I'll, otherwise i'll create this database let me scroll up in case you want to see all the configuration again i have chosen microsoft sql server rds here latest version name i have given joytress hyphen ms sql you can give any name credential settings instance configuration then storage then connectivity option after connectivity we have additional configuration performance info uh, metrics that's it it is showing sharing the cost also 45 dollar 
all fine for me. So I'm going to create this database. So moment you click on create database. Just close it. So moment you click on database, database going to start and it will take few minutes to launch. It is going to take few minutes to launch. But I will not be sitting ideal here uh, because this is going to take around 10 to 12 minutes. And you can see the role is instance engine. It is showing you SQL Server Express Edition. Region is AP South 1B. Size is db.t3.small. And the status is creating. And which VPC? Default VPC. Cool. Our one part is done. How to create SQL Server? This is done. Connectivity is left. Connectivity, I will do it once, once that SQL server is stable or available, you can say. So now I am going to create my SQL. Similar way, I am going to create a another database. And this time, I will choose uh, my SQL. This time, I am going to choose my SQL. When you choose my SQL, I scroll down it is going to ask you which version of mysql you want i am choosing latest one here also i am choosing latest one mysql 8 scroll down here you have three options guys template which production which environment you want to use production dev test free tier this is a free tier in case you are in, you don't want to spend any money on learning so you can use this free tier eligible but this is something stops you to give many features so in production you have many extra features you will get it but if you are using dev test dev test means this is designed for this is intended for development use outside of a production environment like in our case, we are just exper experimenting the things, right? So I'm going to use this dev test. But when you are going to use for the production, you will choose this option, production. In production, they give high availability, fast, consistent performance. In dev test, they use, uh, I would say, cheaper hardware. If I talk about in AWS terms or in business terms, why they are giving dev test because this is a development environment they are going not going to take it very seriously and they are not going to give you best performance here you will get a best performance but here you will be paying very less prices very less prices in dev test so i'm just just choosing dev test in dev test we have two three options three options means here, if you're choosing single DB instance, that means it is going to create only one database for you, primary database, MySQL. But if you say, I want to go with multi-AZ, multi availability or DB instance, in that case, they will create one primary DB instance and specific separate DB instance in a different AZ, different AZ, they will create one more DB instance that will remain on standby. That provides high availability data redundancy, but the standby instance doesn't support connections for read workloads. Third is multi AZ DB cluster. This is cluster guys, cluster is more than two. There will be one primary and two readable standby. In case you have a requirement of cluster, which is a newest option. So I'm going with single DB instance to save some cost. Here also they are giving this option. Aurora SQL, Aurora SQL is good. 
वन ऑफ द थिंग इज इन अरोरा सीक्वल इट सपोज सपोर्ट अप टू वन ट्वेंटी एट टी बी ऑफ ऑटो स्केलिंग एस एस टी स्टोरेज दिस इज अ ग्रेट एडवांटेज इन डेटा बेस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वन ट्वेंटी एट एट टी बी इज अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा राइट सो स्क्रोल डाउन हेयर आई एम चूजिंग डेटा बेस वन हेयर आई एम गिविंग माई सीक्वल जस्ट फॉलो द सेम नेमिंग कन्वेंशन configuration please make sure it is by default not going to show you 2 gb or 4 gb instance the max the minimum it is showing you 8 gb you have to change it to bus table classes including t series t series so i am going to click on t so this starts showing 1 gb or 2 gb instance is also so i am going to work with db dot t3 dot small 2 gb of instance uh guys i'm repeating again if you are taking uh these instances there will be a cost associated in your account so make sure you are using it and deleting automatic uh, after the usage i will tell you step of deleting also but this is going to take a lot of cost if you are going to open that permanently storage in storage it is giving you option uh minimum it is giving you 100 gb here so i am going with 100 gb minimum this is provision input output outputs in case you want to increase it that option is available accordingly that the charges will be increased input output ops means that input output operations basically so that is going to increase your costing if you are going to increase this part or uh, same scale same part storage auto scaling here also you have the option you can disable it your choice but in case you need i, I need auto scaling you can say maximum would be 200 and uh, maximum would be 200 and i want to increase aws will going to increase uh, in this case we are getting 100 right so aws will add 10 GB in a time, 10 percent. 10 GB AWS will add. If AWS observe that you are going to use almost 85, oh sorry, 95 percent, 90 percent again, then AWS will add one 10 GB more. So that way it will keep adding, keep adding your according to your needs. In connectivity, I am choosing same option. Don't connect to an EC2 instance. IPv4 as a network type. VPC default, and I need public access. Cool. I need public access. Then I want to create a new security group. Here I'm choosing create new, and here I'm going with new VPC security group name. And here I'm giving a name. For example, my SQL hyphen joinress, and I'm just giving SG here. availability zone i want to create in ap south 1b do you want to create a proxy no i will tell you what is the proxy certificate authority you want to add no password authentication no password authentication is important <laughs> what does that mean is i am going to use database password in case you say no i am don't going to use this database password i want to use iem password iem users that also you can do i will show you that example also click on monitoring do you need enhanced monitoring i do not need that enhanced monitoring that's it so here i am going to create this database my second database is also created with the name of mysql you will see there are two options now right sql server express edition and this is my sql community so if you refresh now the status of 
above one, which is SQL Server Express Edition, is going to change soon. This is backing up. Backing up means it is going to come alive uh, in few minutes now. So these both are creating. So now I'm going to, any questions so far? Any questions so far? This is what I have also created. I will connect with it now once they are live. Now I am going to create third one. Before that, any questions? Okay, taking it as a no. This is Postgres. So I am going in Postgres, create database. Hmm. Um, Postgres, where is Postgres? This one. Postgres is very popular. <laughs> In the case of Postgres, they are not giving any uh, message that Aurora is more powerful than this. It is, it is a powerful. So I personally experience that SQL Server, it is much, much better than SQL Server and Oracle and MySQL, Postgres I'm talking about. It's been in top in the industry as of now, Postgres one. So Postgres engine version, I want to use that is 14.6, um, I'm okay with that. Or let's take a latest in that. Let's take go with 14.6 is a long-term support and most stable version as of now. I'm going to work with dev test. This time I'm quickly choosing the option, single DB instance, database name, I want to give it joy address hyphen uh, Postgres. Enjoy this hyphen Postgres. Uh, here, uh, master username is Pro, uh, Postgres, and I'm keeping same password here also. Admin one two three four five. Instance configuration. I want to go for bus table classes, and I want to work with two GB of RAM. Storage. I want to go with hundred GB. Auto scaling, I do not need. I don't want to connect to EC2. IPv4, I need public instance. Scroll down. I want to create a new security group. And I'm giving a name, Joy address. Joy address. What is the name? Uh, Postgres. I'm just adding L extra. SG, which means security group. I want to go with AP South 1B, RDS proxy I don't want to create. I want to go with password authentication, no extra performance monitoring you need, create this database also. So this is going to create for a third database, which is Postgres database. So now if I see first one, what is the stage of first one? Let me click on this and let me refresh. So see, our first one is ready, right? First one is ready. Now let me start with first one. What I will do before that connectivity, I'm going to connect with SQL Server. So first of all, I will go and open my SQL here. This is MS SQL, sorry. MS SQL, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. The moment you open this software, here it will ask you to create a connection with the database. And that is where I will enter AWS RDS details that I have created MS SQL, right? And I will add those details here. So this is a user interface and it is asking you to connect with server. So in place of server, first you need to go to file and click on connect. The moment you click on connect, it will show you like this. In your case, server name would be blank. Server name would be blank. And from where you can go to server details, you can click on this DB identifier hyperlink. So moment you click on this, this dashboard will open detail page. So there is an endpoint. This endpoint you can use. So copy this endpoint, copy, and go to SQL and paste it. 
and after that you have to use here SQL, uh, by default windows authentication will be selected but you need to choose here sql server authentication and after sql server authentication you need to enter login login in our case would be admin by default and password i kept admin one two three four five remember password and connect so moment you click on connect your database is connected with aws rds so here you can create your tables you can create insert data whatever you want to do you can do it for example i'm saying i want to create one database expand as database right click on this database say new database i want to create database name i'm giving is test database click on ok this database has been created now i am clicking on this database and clicking on new query so moment i click on new query it will ask you to write a query now write your query for writing a query i am going on internet and i'm just saying uh, if google i want to say create table and insert data there is a favorite site my favorite site data to fish.com you can go to that website ready-made script will be available so this is the product table i want to create for example copy and come to here and paste it here i want to create a product table and that product table having product name and you can remove n because in sql we work with where care only so i'm going to create this select this command and click on execute so it says command completed successfully your table has been successfully created and you can see what data is available inside the table as of, as of now no table will no data will be available if i select select star from product it is showing you blank right i want to insert some data so i can use this insert script copy and go to this and use this script so let me use the script and execute so moment you click on execute this five rows are affected you can use this command select star from products to check all data is available here in your sql server so far any questions guys So far, any questions? Gaurav, Manoj, Pradeep, Sai, Arun, Vivekanand. No. Okay. Now I'm going with second database, which is our MySQL. So let me go to AWS and check the latest stage of it. Go to database and click on databases. Here I have my sql is also available now so let me refresh once and for my sql i am going to connect with my sql workbench in case you don't know about this software that software also you can download at free of cost my sir my sql workbench so i'm going to open this ui and in this ui there's a plus button right after installation you will see plus button you need to click on this plus button and it will ask you details connection name i'm just giving mysql connection here mysql connection standard connection i want to create host name host name you will be copying from same go to identifier and copy the endpoint details copy and go to same screen again and paste it port is 3306 by default port username is not a root i want to change that user to admin password password it's stored in vault not in the default so i'm going to store in vault and here you can see 
I I need to write my password, which is admin one two three four five. Click OK. Click on test connection and check if it is working or not. So let me test on test connection. Yeah, it is successfully made the SQL connection. Click OK and OK. Moment you click OK, this is established. Connection is established. Double click on this. Once you double click on this, this is going to open editor. This is going to open editor. Here you can write your commands. For example, I'm using same commands. Um, copy this commands. And here I'm going to use this command. First, let me create a database. Create database. And here I'm giving test underscore database. Let me create this database with the sign execute successfully executed i want to create a table um, no database selected okay need to use use test underscore database select test is executed now let me create a table table successfully created now let me insert records insert successful now let me check records these are the records so far so good any questions so far no okay let's go with databases and check the third one which is joytress postgres server let me click on this postgres server similar way you will find the details over endpoint and for this i am going to use dweaver tool in case you don't know about this this is a community tool free tool the, the beauty of this tool is you can connect any database whether it is sql server oracle mysql dynamo db mongo db Postmos DB, any type of database you can connect with it. Let me show you. It is a beautiful tool. So, in your case, let me delete all these things to save some confusion. Otherwise, multiple things are there. Let's let's go to the uh, database and new database connection. In new database connection, see how many databases it support. Popular databases: IBM DB2, DuckDB, MariaDB, MySQL, ODBC, Oracle, Postgres, SQL Server, SQLite, Apache, Apache Drill. Analyticals also support Databricks, ClickHouse, right? and time series also embedded also so there's a lot of support is available no sql also sql also hadoop also full text search also elastic search so i'm going to work with all and all i'm choosing postgres and click on next moment i click on next it is asking you that host host i'm going to copy it this is my host copy and paste this is my host port is 5432 that is fine database is postgres and username is postgres and the password is i kept same password admin12345 and let me test a connection it says connected successfully click on ok and finish once you click on OK and finish, you will see this database is connected here. So let me create some data in Postgres database. Let me right click and uh, um, new SQL script. I am going to create 
some data in it. I think Postgres commands is also similar to that. Let me just copy it and go to this database and press enter. That's it. I am going to create table products successfully created. I want to insert records successfully inserted. I want to run it. These are the records. So we have done these three part, how to create SQL Server and connect with SQL Server Management Studio, how to connect MySQL in RDS and connect with MySQL Workbench, how to create Postgres in RDS and connect with DB Viewer. Now I'm going with read replica. Let's for, uh, I will do this step later on, SQL Server Backup. Let's understand what is read replica first. Read replica with the name itself, you can understand what is the importance of a read replica. Read replica means your organization won't uh, some database to be configured in a way that we can read a data from that database, but actually that will not be get a transactional request. So for example, you are working in amazon.com and Amazon BI team, business intelligence team need one database and their database should not be used, should you not be used in the production applications. The purpose of that database should be to read data from that server for intelligence purpose, for sales and marketing purpose, for creating strategies purpose, but that is not going to impact real application. Real application data will be written and the same data will be written to read replica also. With the name itself, you can say it's a read replica. It is a replica, but only read. You can do read operations out of it. And guys, this kind of operations, if you used to do in own premises, then you have to do a lot of things for read replica. But that things, if you're going to do on the AWS environment, that is very easy, very, very easy. Go to databases and click on this database, right? And there is an option, go to actions and say, create read replica. So moment you click on create read replica, it will ask you to create read replica and give the required details. Let me fill out the details. So I am going to create a read replica for Postgres. The similar option is available for MySQL and MS SQL also. So here it is asking you the replica source is Joytress Postgres. And what identifier you want to give it here? I'm saying Joytress hyphen Postgres hyphen read only. I'm giving a name hyphen read only. What configuration you are looking for? I am saying 2GB configuration. AWS region, I am looking for Asia Pacific. Storage, I am looking for same storage, but auto scaling is not needed. Availability, I want to go for single DB instance. <clears throat> connectivity, in connectivity, I am choosing IPv4 by default, public accessible. Security group, you can use same security group which I have created for Joytress Postgres SG. Availability zone, I want in 1B only. Database authentication, same additional information. I don't need tags, snapshots. I don't need that. Performance insight, I don't need that. That's it. Create read replica. How, so many, how many read replicas are you going to create? Uh, did you mention that? No, only one it is going to create. There is no option to mention how much read replica you want to create. So if I want more, then you need to create more manually oh. or via the script, you can create it. So, okay. So can you, can you just go to that screen where you are creating? That option is not available. You are asking like if you want to create four replica, five replica. 
Yes. Okay, that is not available. Can you okay? Can you come down a uh, DB instance class? Come little bit up. Uh, DB instance class. वो है ना वो burst table and all. What is those things? This is a category. This is a category. Like if you are going with this standard one, it has higher configuration starting from eight GB, at least. Okay. Starting from eight okay. GB. If you are going for memory bus table classes, it has starting from 64 GB. So 16 GB. So if you are going with bus table classes, that is uh, starting from 1 GB. What is yes. the what is mean by bus table? One, one day they we are, are just giving a category bus table classes. They have three categories: standard, memory optimized, bus table classes. So it is it has no meaning bus table. Uh, not sure about this because it someone had asked me in an interview what do you mean by bus table classes. I sorry, if someone had asked me in, in my office what is what do you mean by bus table classes, the client had asked me. Okay, so this question answer. is being asked. Okay, I couldn't I couldn't answer that. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, let me check bus table classes. RDS three type of classes it has memory optimized and bus table performance it's just general purpose and amazon support three type of db C instance type in the for more information about its instance types. Let me click on this instance type. The following are the additional capabilities. Stable instance accumulate a number of performance credit per hour. This credit can be consumed when traffic increase and you need sustainable. I've seen many user try to obtain economic by using T family. They are basically quite disappointed. So this was table is available for EC2 instances also and for RDS also. No, that is a category. That is a category. That's what I'm saying. In, in instance types, they have multiple categories available, right? Like uh, hardware optimized, general op purpose, compute optimized, multiple categories available. But in database, they are calling it different name. Bus table classes. That bus table classes is they never mention what is the meaning of bus table. I will check and share a link with you that for what is they call with the bus table classes. My my. Google Chrome is working very slow. Bus table classes. Uh, the EC2 bus table. What are bus table classes? Bus table classes is a virtual machine instance that provide a baseline level of. So it is a bus line. Bus table instances. Bus table in available in Oracle also. Bus table instance is a virtual machine instance that provide a baseline level of CPU performance with the ability to bus to a higher level to support occasional spikes in usage. More bus table, like able to able to handle busting, having the ability to exceed the normal maximum bandwidth for shorter period. That is called bus table classes. Like sudden spike, they can handle. 
bustable okay. instances are able to it is uh, just to short bustable instances are not given by aws these are the standards even this is available for oracle vmware everywhere these instances are available but i will study more on that and share with you sure so i have created one red replica now let me go back to red replica and check the status of it let me click on databases and this is still creating let me refresh so still it is creating right so but you can see this is your primary database this is primary and this is replica so that replica is going to prepare so, in some time so, so one one more question is so if what happens to the auto scaling if if the load increases then we need more read replicas right then we cannot go manually and try to create more read replicas so no, there for, is no auto scaling feature here no auto scaling you have to do it by yourself this read only part how will we know that, that that the load will increase when at what time the load will increase so that load is increasing probably you have to do for another way but read only instance will not be created automatically either you need to write a script or some kind of automation you have to monitor cpu usage of this instance or probably you need to check that how much query performance matrix you can use in that case if it is going to give you bad result in graphs then probably you can write a script which is going to create one more read only replica so script means you are talking about uh, cloud formation scripts or which script you can write a powershell script also or cloud formation template also you can go for both ways mm -hmm. okay but in case uh, if our database is very much high and we know the tables, so we can create the indexes also so that we can uh, reduce the performance. No, no, that indexes, indexes are possible uh, to the extent, right? You cannot uh, say that even after optimization of tables, creating indexes, that things are there, but still load is increasing. Let's say you have created 164 JB instance and suddenly 5 million requests are coming on your database 10 million requests are coming on your database that database cannot able to handle it right okay in that case definitely you need auto scaling okay so now this is the read replica is available now let me connect with this read replica also let me copy these details copy and go to database new database i want to connect uh, postgres i want to connect host is this and password i want to give is same password admin one two three four five just connection succeeded right connect with it and finish now you have postgres 2 now let me connect with this go to databases postgres database new sql editor and new script here i am going in uh, script and here let me just write select star from product so i'm going to write this command and run it see all the data is available here also now i'm going to write some data in my main instance which is products right i'm going to write few more command for example i'm saying i want to insert here uh, electronic something just say Okay. while posting me 140 
insert one extra is there okay let me write again test it again insert it successfully select star from product six right 140 is available now go to second instance select star from products here also it is available so it will take only i would say second maximum to maximum second of latency it will take and the result will be replicated in second instance also which is known as read only instance but like the name state it is a read only you cannot insert for example i'm saying i want to use the script in this instance and press enter i'm saying uh, for example i'm saying buttons and price is 170 just run the script so it is going to give you error that cannot execute it is a read only transaction you cannot insert data in it right guys so far good uh, one question uh, one question is there so so what is the frequency now now this is a read replica i understood the master is the right uh, the master is the where the we the application will be writing the uh, data into right so, mm -hmm. so what is the frequency of replication between the master and this read replica? Immediate. Okay, immediate. So, so if mm -hmm. there are there are hundreds of read replicas, so immediately whatever is written into the master, so it will propagate into the read replicas immediately. Yeah, that will be uh, answer to your question. That will be near to real time, but in it can take sometimes it can take seconds of time also. Okay. So, but so it, 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 it AWS claims that it is real time. Immediately, the the way you are writing the command, for example, here I'm only writing one command. Replicating one is very easy, right? When you are yes. going to write in millions, definitely there will be some latency. In seconds, it will be replicated your data in another server. Yes, and 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 can the read replicas be spread across uh, other availability zones and other regions also? Or will, will is it mandatory that they will be residing in the same availability zone or same region? Same region and same availability. So we cannot uh, spread these three replicas to. No, different... you can you can change it, but you have I have created in this same region. But when you are going to create it, it is going to ask you that option where you want to create it. For example, I am going to create. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Understood. So, so it can spread across different regions also. Yes, right. Okay, so if, if it is spreading across different regions, then the propagation time will be more. Yes, obviously. Yes, so, so it is it is better to be in keep these read replicas in different different regions because of high availability. Yes, right. So it depends on your requirement. If you are looking for high availability and all these things, then go for the different region. But if your requirement says we have to limit the data according to some compliance rules in the same region, then probably you can go for the same region. Any more questions here? Yeah. So question is that if we are creating the read replicas and we are creating multiple read replicas, so uh, it will create a load on the ma master instance also because first instance we have created for the MS SQL server. So mm -hmm. means load will be increased on that. No, no, load will not be increased. Basically okay. how read replica works is they stable another, uh, I would say workload or they set up another system. So they just uh, give a command out of it and data will be replicated from for example you are creating 100 100 replicas yes. so that somehow it is going to affect the performance but not as such first they are will they will, they are going to write on first system and that information will be replicated to another servers so whether so, you are writing whether you are creating yes. one whether you are creating five it is going to take almost same time 
so can we consider this read replica as a uh, view in the normal relational database uh, yes it is only view okay it is okay. only view okay fine and this can read replica okay and uh, in the views in the relational database we can create a view based on some keys also so is there, is it any possibility no so we can define it, the key. every data will be replicated generally what happens in the view we generally take, create views on the tables yeah, but okay. this is created on database entire things you are doing on that database will be replicated okay, okay. here okay 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 it it not the table dependent it's yeah, whole database it's not okay. a table dependent even you are going to create a table here same table yeah. will be replicated here okay okay whole database will be replicated okay yeah fine but what happens if the master goes down then will some read replica become the master yes that option is there probably what you can do is come to database instances or come to databases you say by any chance my primary is going down and i want to make it my replica as a primary Okay. So that option is available. What you can do in that case is, for example, I'm just selecting this option, Joy address, Postgres read only, and I'm going to actions and I'm going to promote. Promote means I want to, I don't want to deal with this replica server. Let's convert it to primary now. Okay. So you will take promote and it will ask you, you want to take a backups and all. I'm saying no backups as of now. Just promote it to read replica. So what happens? The endpoint then the endpoint will change or it will be the same as the previous master. It will be changed. No, endpoint will remain same, but only this will be converted to replica to primary in some time. Automatically it will be changed. Because if endpoint changes, then in application level you have to go and change that. Yes, right. No, no, endpoint is will remain same. That that endpoint you have to change anyway. Yeah. That switch endpoint you have to change it. We, uh, means means if, if I make this joy address postgres read only as a master or the primary, then the endpoint will change. You are saying yes, this endpoint then will remain same. Joy address earlier you were using joy address postgres, right? Now yes. you are making this as a primary. So yes. you have to you have to get the address of it and replace in your configuration. That's the only thing you need to do. Oh, okay, okay. That also you can do automation with the help of automation. So so we we cannot keep two primaries. Means one if one fails, then we can make we can and other will because if this this in order to do something manually go and do promotion. It will take some that time. Option right? is, that option is anyway enable, enable for you. I am just telling you that through replica also you can make it primary. But okay. that that you are saying that creating two primary, that is also possible. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm just telling that you can make replica as a primary also. Okay. okay. Understood. Understood. Let me refresh. Now see. Both are in modifying state. But trust me, I had the bad experience with it. I changed in the real time production application and my application stopped working for 10 minutes. And till that time, we don't have the RC for it, to be honest. It takes time. It says we, mod we are doing modifying internally, but it breaks existing connections. In our case, it broke all the existing connections. Application was stopped for 10 minutes. Then we make manual changes and then it start working. Then what is the best practice to design this architecture? Uh, probably best would be, I will let you know. Best, there is no best in that, but that 10 minute of downtime we had in our application. Because in interview, they if they will ask that what is the best practice, they, they can ask that this, this will take time, right? So what will be yeah. your solution? I will tell you around that because there is no, as of now, I don't find any solution which is making you 100% secure like 
no downtime in databases. It so is what, going what, to be what, there. What, what about two masters or two primaries? No, that will add a lot of extra cost, right? Client is even not agree on that solution. Mm -hmm. Not everywhere you are, you are going to add higher availability and there are tons of things change in architecture and that should be cost friendly also. That should be disaster recovery also. That everything they are looked for under budget friendly. If we keep on adding machines, that solution is always there. But you cannot spend a lot of money on the infrastructure also. So, so one 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 solution is I I don't know I may be wrong is that if this goes down but for some reason, then automatically a new new primary will be spinning up. Is there any 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 solution like that? So that that also will take time. That's what I'm saying. When you are going to create RDS in AWS, <laughs> anyway, it is going to take some time, five seven minutes or nine minutes or ten minutes. During that time, what you can do is you can stand by one of the when when you go create database, there is was an option, right? This option. Let me choose MySQL. MySQL. In MySQL, they are showing this option, right? Multi AZ DB cluster, two readable standby DB instances, right? Or you can go for this multi AZ DB instance, create a primary and standby instance in different AZ. That is also option. But point is everywhere you are creating a read a replica instances. And if you're going to convert that instances into a primary, that is going to take time. That time you cannot ignore five to seven minutes of time or somehow uh, you can say 10 to 20 minutes of time. You cannot adjust that time. You have to bear that time. If you are not ready for the cost, even though you are ready for the cost, you have to change the endpoints manually. Some companies do the automation using CI CD. As soon as they find their database is down, a work time or release will be triggered automatically and that will change the endpoints quickly. But that also takes time. One few seconds of time, existing connection will break in that case. So anyway, anyway, there, there will be some downtime. According to me, there will be a downtime, but when you work with serverless applications, serverless architectures like DynamoDB and all, in that application, you can meet no downtime. Rest of the things, you can just mold it like Google handles, like no downtime for Google, right? We never seen for Facebook, Insta group, they do handling. They do handling these things with the help of blue green deployment. So they do new instances up first, then they do uh, migrations of databases, then go for removal of older instances. That is that comes under the blue green deployment. This you are uh, okay. So this you are talking about GCP. Google means this no, you are no. talking. No, no, blue green deployment is a oh, model. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. Blue green deployment, I know. Yeah, blue green deployment. That is also supported by AWS. You can read about it, blue green deployment. Yeah. So in that case, this would be a good solution for you if you go for blue green deployment, pre-baking, bootstrapping, rolling deployment in place. Multiple solutions are there in this. So just just out of curiosity, one one more question is: This is about this is you are talking about AWS that there will be uh, some uh, this one some downtime, but this this same thing might happen in GCP also. In supposing so GCP concept, also, concept will remain same in every cloud, almost same. Okay. So whether you are going to apply blue green deployment, that blue green deployment you can create in AWS Azure. Alibaba or any other cloud which is supporting that model. Okay, thank you. So, this is cool. Uh, Joint press, Postgres.
now this is converted to instance so now if i run this command this is going to work see it has been executed right if i go select and this product buttons has been added so now this become your primary database with the few clicks you can make it otherwise you have to do a lot of changes that is the one area that they have improved a lot they have given you a lot of mess uh, things just over the click you can do it cool let's do the last thing for today and uh, the thing is how to create sql server in rts we have already seen uh, how to create backup to s3 how to create backup to s3 for example i want to backup this database to s3 test database i want to backup for that i am going to show you one command this is a command and you will find this command over the github also copy this command and keep it here paste this is the command now understand what this command is doing i want to execute a command msdb.dbo rds underscore database underscore backup this database this is available in rds R admin sorry msdb it is available if you go with the system databases inside the msdb this is rds underscore backup database is available cool source db name which is a source db name in our case test database it is also same test database where you want to keep a database backup that is a one thing so from where you will get this address for this, I am going to create one S3 bucket in my account. Go and create a bucket S3. So let me go to S3 and create a bucket in which region I have created this Mumbai. So I'm going to create a Mumbai bucket, one bucket in Mumbai. I'm just calling it test bucket for backup Asia Pacific Mumbai. I'm quickly creating this bucket. Uh, bucket name already available. Let's say sql i'm adding sql in last create bucket is available let me copy bucket name go to bucket this is a name copy arn 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 means amazon resource name that's a unique name to every aws resource this is a name i'm going to copy copy and going to replace in the here into till this this is a back uh, this is a s3 name i want to create backup with the name of today's date 090423 dot backup file now i want to run this now i want to run this let me run and show you error first it will give you error basically let me execute what it is saying database backup 
restore is not enabled basically what i want to say you here when you go to your databases this is your database where you are taking a backup right this is your database if you click on modify you will see there is a section of option group that option group i have taken is by default let me show you this one this option group this option group does not have permissions to take a backup this option group does not have the options choose the db option group that enables any opt optional functionality you want the db instance to support so in case of sql mysql or oracle they don't support direct backups to aws i'm talking about so you have to enable them to enable them you can do one thing you can go to dashboard you can go to option groups and here you can create your own backup group let me create a group under the group i am saying just give it a name uh, i will give today's date name for example or just say backup for backup for sql machine this is backup backup choose engine this is important guys which engine you are working on in database i have chosen 15 let me show you go to your database and which version of sql server you are using that engine you need to select here go to ms sql and click on configuration once you click on configuration it is showing you engine version is 15 you have to take 15 here 15 oh sorry before that you need to select which version of rds you are working on i am working with express edition right ex express edition uh, i think this is let me check with which one is this go to databases create database i am going to create a database for sql server in sql server express edition e i think e e would be a good choice for you e e this one this is little confusing ex is express i think ex is enterprise i think and e e means express edition so let me choose ee and which version 15 version create this option group is created right where is this backup for sql machine and now in this you need to add a option this option i was telling about this is optional i am going to add option And here I'm going to add a operation as SQL Server Backup Restore. SQL Server Backup and Restore. Which I am role. I want to create a new role. I am role you want to give. Suppose I'm giving your address, uh, copy, SQL, role. Which destination S3 bucket. Uh, bucket name is test bucket for backup sql right let me search out test bucket for backup sql this is right this is a backup s3 bucket and you want to apply this change immediately yes i want to apply this change to immediately add option now you have created this option group right you need to upgrade your sql server option group with this option go to databases go to ms sql click on actions uh, modify under modify i want to align 
new option group which have permissions for backup and restore. Scroll down. I'm changing option group to uh, where is my one? Which one I have created? This one, right? Joy test copy backup or which one? Which name I have given? To option group. This one. Uh, this one, right? Your voice is not coming. Let me check it again. What name I have given? Go to dashboard. I really forget the name of it. Go to option group. Um, this was backup for SQL machine. I think it is not coming. I need to refresh it. Let me take now, go, 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 and option go. Um, this is not showing, right? Um, backup for SQL. Backup for SQL is not available. Why? Record databases. Let me refresh here. Click on this database, go to modify. Why it is not showing? This is for SQL Server and okay, okay, got it. I think we have created wrong one. Enterprise edition. Express for Express, it was EX. Sorry, guys. Let me create one, one more. Or let me change the same. Go to option group. Go inside that. And uh, let me add option. Instead of op yeah, delete this option group. Let me create a new one. That's why it was not coming. The version is mismatch. Here I'm saying backup for SQL Server copy. I'm just building this name copy. Choose version is EX and 15. And this one add option. Under that option, I'm going to add backup and restore and create a new role. A role name I'm giving just a copy role. I'm giving just copy role. Bucket name is test bucket. Test bucket backup SQL and apply immediately add option. Now let's see if it is coming or not. Go to modify and refresh the screen. Roll down and uh, option group backup for SQL and continue apply immediately that means what is what does it mean that whatever your change is doing that you want to apply during the maintenance window which is scheduled for 10th April tomorrow or you want to do it immediately I want to do it immediately modify done
After that, you might need to wait for a couple of minutes, but let me try to run the same command again. So, Copy so this. You are modifying that. So any impact on traffic? No, that might restart your service in certain things. You might need to do a restart. In that case, it will impact your application. Yes. Okay. okay. So it's better to do it in the maintenance period. Better to do in the maintenance window. Let me execute this command now. This is still not running. I think that's in progress as of now. Let me uh, refresh. This is modifying, right? So this is taking some time. Let's wait for it. So, uh, so this is one approach of taking backup. So is there any approach, other approach like taking snapshots or something? Yeah, yeah, that option is also there. Snapshot, automated backup, multiple options are there. Snapshot yeah. is also there. Okay, so every day we, we can... cover one scenario for snapshot also. So every day we can take snapshots also. Yeah, yeah, that so you can schedule. Restore, restore it at some to, point. Yeah, yeah. You can even schedule snapshot. Automated backup also you can schedule. These have taken at 9th April. After 4 minutes it is taking backup. So automated backup means it will backup in the S3, S3 bucket which you have created. No, it is taking a backup in AWS. So once you are going to retrieve it, they will give it option to restore in point in time. So you can take it. But you can schedule that backup in S3 also. Okay. But now you configured for S3, right? This one? Yeah, yeah. That that I'm configuring, but that is manual. Mm -hmm. That is manual. So okay. let me retry okay. now. Execute. Okay. See now. This command is executed, right? So with below command, you can see a status. RDS underscore task underscore status. So that command will show you status of it. So it says as of now, 0% complete. Duration it, it has taken is zero minute as of now. I think it will take two or three minutes of time. Let's wait for it. And the max, the as I would say, the max data you have, it, it is going to take time in hours also. So let me try execute this command again. It says 100% complete. So it is in progress still. Probably it is in last committed stage or something. We need to wait for a few more seconds. Then I will go to S3. Uh, where is my S3? And I will check if object is available. As of now, no object is available, right? So let me check it again, execute. It says still in progress. Let's wait for a few more seconds. Execute. Two minutes it has taken. So which one is the better option? This one S3 or taking snapshot is the better option? So when you want to take a backup on S3, this is a good option. When you want to take automatic backups, that is backup is a good option. So supposing I have terabytes of data, so S3 is no, no, in that terabytes of data, backup is a good option. Backup is incremental. And this is every time you are running this command, this is going to be from start. This is not the good way for incremental data. If you want to take a backup for TBs, GBs, then automated backup is a good solution. Now let's check. It says success, right? Now go to S3 and refresh. You have this data available. The MB of data is available. Now you can use this backup file 
wherever you want. So guys, I am good for today. Let me know if you have any questions we have covered today. How to create SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, Read Replica, Promote Read Replica, Database Proxy will cover some other day. And uh, today is Sunday, right? Yeah. So next Saturday will cover DynamoDB. And uh, you can read about it, DynamoDB. Plus we'll cover uh, SQS, SNS. Three services we will target for next week, or also cloud formation templates and Terraform P. These five services we can target for next week: DynamoDB, SQS, SNS, cloud formation, and Terraform. I am good for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. So snapshot also you will show next week. Yeah, snapshot also I will show. Not next week, but I will show. Definitely when we are going to have extra time, I will show you. Hi, Ritesh. This is Tarun. Yeah, Tarun. Like, can you please uh, request that person like to upload the videos with name, like with the topic? Yeah, I will talk to him. Oh, thank you.